everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today. We have one of our favorite hearties here <laughs> to talk with us about the new season of When Calls the Heart and everything else going on in her life. We have Andrea Brooks. And Andrea, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. This is your fourth time on our yep. show. <laughs> Incredible. That uh, <laughs> is a lot, a lot of years. <laughs> Talked a lot about yeah. a lot, talked about a lot of seasons. It's yes, fun. we always have a great time having you on, oh, and thank you. Uh, I'm excited to talk about When Calls the Heart yeah. and your other projects. But you know, we made it through 2020, mm-hmm. and how have you been? How has your 2020 been? You've got a young <laughs> child. Yeah. Uh, how is that dealing with everything, quarantine, all that fun yeah. stuff? Um. Let me just open my bubbly so we can discuss this. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, uh, right. 2020. Ooh, um, it's been a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, obviously, there have been such low points that have been so devastating to witness just on a mass scale as sure. a society. Um, I Selfishly, I, I do feel very fortunate because I've managed to work through a lot of 2020, despite everything that's been going on. Obviously there was that huge shutdown. So there was like a four or five month period where nothing was happening in the industry, which is kind of unprecedented where everyone was home um, and no one knew what was going to happen to their shows. If things were going to be canceled or, and you know, I was working on Supergirl in the middle of the shutdown. So we didn't even finish that episode. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of mass confusion. Um, but I tried to take a step back and I tried to kind of simplify things and, and I started baking and cooking and I had a young baby who was only a few months old when the shutdown happened. So it was a bit of a blessing in disguise, I'd say, to kind of concentrate on family in a way mm-hmm. that I probably wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. So it, it's it's been okay. I've been safe and healthy and um, taking all the protocols very seriously, but at the same time, um, you know, the beginning of 2020 was wild. I was working a ton, uh, business trips, doing all kinds of things. And then boom, shut down complete home time. And then as soon as we were able to ramp things up, one calls the heart was one of the first shows back, uh, in Canada. So Mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, we took, we took the protocols very seriously and we got through the full season, no shutdowns. And that was in August. Yeah. July, August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were, we were back full force in the summer and I feel very thankful because I know that's not everyone's situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it, 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 what roller coaster is the best way I could describe the year. Yeah. I I think that's a a good description. I don't know. I feel like I, it's just, I mean, I was already kind of a hermit person and now I've just like Mm -hmm. become this little, like, (laughs) we think it's for the podcast because people are like, Oh, it was such great weather today. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I need to go outside. Yeah. Going outside is good. (laughs) I've actually, I read that introverts have handled the pandemic better than expected because I, I mean, I feel like there are times in my life I would consider myself a little bit introverted and, Mm -hmm. um, and, and you kind of, you you feel safe. You're like, oh no, I, I, I know how to handle this. So, so that's great. And it's lovely that we have things like podcasts and yeah. online content. Ways Thank goodness. To online. Thank goodness. Yeah. The extroverts need it. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. The extroverts <laughs> need sure. to learn. <laughs> but so you did some, did you do any like sourdough? Did you catch the sourdough train? Sure did. Yes. Sure did. I was into the sour I, monster. Yeah. Um, I had this, I was heavy into sourdough for a couple months. Yeah. And then yeah. once work rolled around, that was it. I couldn't, that's too much for me to focus on. <laughs> Um, got into sourdough, made a lot of, one thing I love about um, living, when I was living in the city, actually recently moved, but I, I'm a big coffee girl. I love going out, meeting friends downtown, going to my favorite coffee shop, and yeah. obviously that all shut down. So I've really been, uh, I've become a little bit of a barista kind of in my downtime. <laughs> so you anyway. can make it good. Uh- uh, like pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. And, and yeah. I made a lot of chais, chai lattes. Uh, I made some whipped coffees in the summer, iced coffees. So yeah, that's, that was another focal point. I bought some really great beans and I kind of taught myself to yeah. make my desired beverages of choice. So <laughs> another we really, it project. has forced us all to be a little more resourceful, I think, than we I might have otherwise you're right. been. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. I think we will walk away from this having learned some great lessons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coffee. Or use Grubhub a lot. <laughs> or use Grubhub a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Uh, well, very. So 
uh, your character on Supergirl had a lot of drama last season. My friend Michelle was getting me up to date because I don't watch the show, full <laughs> disclosure. She was getting me up to date and it sounded pretty intense. You've yeah. got, uh, there's villains and Lena Luther and all mm. kinds of stuff going on. Uh, what is that like for you to play a villain on the show and to have all that drama? It's amazing. It's yeah. Eve is one of the most fun characters I've ever played. She's reckless, but sweet. And she has a good heart, but she finds herself in these crazy situations and she's linked with Lex Luthor and she's under his thumb, but then she's not, but then she is again. And uh, she's complicated and, and just, she's a, she's a trip. <laughs> you, ne you never really know what to expect from her, but getting to run around in funny outfits with guns and it's just, a, it's kind of a dream role. And it's so different from what I do, you know, Hallmark wise. So sure. it, it's, um, it's lovely. And working with John Cryer, he's a, such an icon and such a lovely, he, lovely human being. I, I've enjoyed every second on set with him. So it's, you know, that show's been such a gift in so many ways. Now, are you going to be in the final season they have uh, of Supergirl? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still kicking. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> popping up. Um, things, obviously, like, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on schedule-wise and work-wise, but uh, still very much in the universe. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. very good. Uh, yeah, so they haven't started shooting that final season. They, right? they have. They, there oh, okay. have been a number of things. COVID has, has provided, has um, caused some challenges um, with many of the CW shows. So, but still going, <laughs> still, still going. going, still well, kicking. That's good. That's yeah. good. Uh, so the, when calls the heart, uh, did they, they were able to basically make up their whole schedule. They were able to, they wouldn't lose, they didn't lose any major time uh, mm -hmm. from the COVID shutdown. They were able to yeah, we, we started on time as planned. Um, there was a little bit, things kind of changed with the Christmas movie situation. That was the one thing that I guess as every, has been announced. Um, that's the major difference this year. But on the, on the positive side, we get 12 episodes as opposed to 10. Mm. So that was kind of cool to have a longer season to draw out the storylines. And that's something that I hope going forward, we're able to continue because the more episodes you have, the better arc you can have. And, yeah. and it just gives you more time to kind of breathe and settle into your storyline for the season. Mm -hmm. Do you have, so you have a new showrunner coming mm -hmm. on the season. And so was that, uh, did you notice a big change? Did you feel like it's going to, that we're as, as viewers are going to notice a big change? Oh, Mr. John Tinker. I adore him. Uh, one of the things I love about him is as soon as he joined early, early on, this was actually before the COVID shutdowns, he went out for lunch, dinner, or coffee with every, every major cast member. And he wanted to hear our thoughts. And he had such a profound respect for what we've created. And the show has been successful. He didn't want to change anything he just he wanted to hear from all of us about our characters and our experiences and what we what we where we thought our characters were going and it was just such a such a, a gift um, to have a showrunner care so deeply and to spend that amount of time with every, each and every one of us um, and and he he doesn't want to change what's made this show successful by any means but I think what you'll see this season is he really does each character justice he really really cares about backstory and history and providing little Easter eggs here and there for each character that I think as fans everyone will enjoy because we, we do allude to the past and we connect our characters in really neat ways this season and and that's a testament mm. to Mr. Tinker oh that'll be really interesting mm-hmm so even with Faith, we'll get to kind of know more about her backstory a little bit. Yeah, I yeah, I think so. Faith, um, I, I mean, I love how uh, Faith was handled this season. I think we'll see her mature and grow up. Obviously, she's come back from her um, her time in school, and uh, you'll kind of see her settle into her not not the same life. It's it's a bit of a new life. She's kind yeah. of well, she'll have a new outlook, which has been really fun to explore. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be interesting because now she's a doctor, mm -hmm. and is that going to be a conflict a little bit for Carson? And do they have mm -hmm. enough people in Hope Valley to support two doctors? Yeah, it's a good question. 
It's a very good question. <laughs> You'll have to tune in to see what happens. Um, but yeah, like any, like any person, when you come back from school or you have a profound experience in your life that really shapes you, you know, coming back to your old life, some things have to change. And, and sometimes there can be conflict, there might not be, but you, you, I think on a foundational level, you'll see Faith kind of grow up as a person because we've seen her grow up. I mean, when I started this show, I was 25 and Faith was early 20s. Um, so it's been a really neat journey to see her go through so, so many pivotal points in her life and to face them while in Hope Valley, while in Hope Valley, you know, yeah. difficulties with her family and uh, difficulties with boyfriends and fiancés and, and trying to follow her heart and her career at the same time. Uh, there's been, there's been a lot of fun things to explore. So that all kind of comes to a head in a way this season. Ooh, well, that could be, I think, really fun. I could, would be interested to see Dr. Carson get a little jealous, again, <laughs> all, like dealing with that, because it's been pretty, so far, Faith and Dr. Carson have been pretty uh, lovey-dovey, mm -hmm. not a lot of conflict going on. So I think it's going to be interesting if we get a little of that conflict and get a little of that drama, and that'll be fun. Tune in to see. What Ooh, happens. very exciting. <laughs> um, so, how do they manage on a show like that? How do they manage COVID element there? Mm. Like, because uh, you obviously can't do a two week quarantine for every single guest, you know, actor mm -hmm. and every single, like you can for a movie. Um, so, how do they manage all of that? Well, I think this season we really focused on the characters that we already have in Hope Valley. Of course, we had the addition of Natasha Burnett and Viv Leacock who came, who come to town this season and their storyline is fabulous. But apart from that, I'd say we did have guest stars, but it was maybe pared down a little bit mm -hmm. uh, compared to what we're used to. We followed the provincial guidelines very closely, obviously. Um, and as long as you weren't coming in from out of province, if you were Vancouver based or living in Vancouver, you could work on the show after you had a uh, I can't remember if it was two or three uh, negative COVID tests in a row. So that's how they kept us safe uh, in that regard. And I believe if there was anyone coming from out of province, they did. Well, I know for sure anyone coming from Los Angeles or from the States, they had a mandatory two week quarantine. So everyone did do that at the beginning of the season. But if you were a guest actor or if you um, had a walk on role of any kind and you were coming from out of province, you did also have to quarantine. Mm -hmm. uh, technically. And I believe mm -hmm. everybody followed that. Um, but almost everybody in that cast is in Canada, right? They're, they're yeah. 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 Jack Wagner. What am I saying? Yeah. He mm -hmm. the only one I could think of. Yeah. Jack, Aaron. Yeah. There are, there are a couple who come up from the States and then oh, Kevin Aaron, came in from yeah, Toronto. Yeah. So he was asked, I, I believe as well. So yeah, but, but everyone really did follow, um, follow the protocols because we all really wanted the show to go and we were looking around and a lot of the other shows were suffering from issues with COVID whether I don't know if there were many positive cases but um, sometimes there were testing delays and, and other shows were kind of shutting down around us and we were all like okay we kind of made a group pact as a cast we we're like we're gonna work really hard we're gonna take this very seriously we're gonna all limit our social time outside of work uh, to make sure that this this can go full steam ahead. Mm. Do you feel like they had to change the plots quite a bit because you couldn't have the group scenes and the festivals and things like that? A, a little bit. I think this season we, I would say we shot outside much more. Um, that seems to be something that a lot of productions are doing. Um, being outside is healthier and safer COVID wise. Um, but what we, what we did, we were just super diligent with testing. So mm -hmm. you kind of know when you're in a group, <sighs> The, the test, the making sure that we were all tested frequently was kind of the saving grace. Uh, so we do have some group scenes, but things were taken seriously. We had to clear out and they had to air out rooms this season. Um, we tried to shoot in clusters as much. So if there was a group scene, it would be like, okay, here, we'll, we'll shoot this portion and then we'll clear you out and then we'll shoot this portion and then we'll clear you out. So there were a lot of attempts um, to make this function as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think it would be particularly tricky with when you've got uh, the the twins playing little baby Jack, mm -hmm. and uh, you have uh, the other other smaller children, mm -hmm. that would be you know that of course you have to be extra careful. Absolutely. That, you know you don't want a, a little child getting COVID. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, and we, I'm just so thankful we didn't have any positive cases. Uh, everyone took things so seriously and, and we got through the season. So yes, very, <laughs> very, very <laughs> thankful. Very, very yeah. thankful. Yeah, well, that's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I don't know if you can uh, tell us at all, give us any kind of hint about, is it going to be a pretty epic season for faith and carson no spoilers Ooh, is it going to be an epic season i would say so we had a lot of we had a lot of interesting dynamic scenes that were really Mm -hmm. fun this year uh and yeah i think you know bringing in a new showrunner with a new outlook it was it was fun because i've worked with paul for so many years and and it's always exciting when you come to work and you're like oh like this is a little this is different this is going to be an experiment let's go Mm -hmm. and um yeah we had a blast yeah. Is there anything that you and Paul do to kind of help your chemistry? Or do you feel like it's kind of effortless? I feel like at this point we know each other so well and we're so comfortable around one another. Um, it, it's quite easy to just fall into it. It's always hard when, when you meet someone new and you're starting a new project and sometimes you do movies and you kind of like shake someone's hand. Well, not during COVID, you would give them like a a bump and be like, hi, nice to meet you. Okay. So we're in love. COVID high five. A COVID (laughs) high five. Uh, How are you? What's your name? Um, It can be a little awkward, but when you've worked with someone for years, you know them and you know their family and you know their history and you know how they work and you know what makes them happy and sad. And and, Mm -hmm. and it, it becomes a little more effortless the longer that you work with somebody. Yeah. Well, it must be fun for I don't know for both of you to be playing these characters when he's just got engaged you have a fairly new marriage yeah. uh, you know new child like you're both kind of new with you know love and happiness and all totally. of that like it must oh, be yeah and we, it, we have yeah. we always share stories with each other we know each other's families it is it is pretty special to have a great working relationship with somebody um, and yeah, you, it, 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 I don't know. It, it is just kind of effortless when you get along with somebody, it just kind of works. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, it, yeah. what the magic spell is and, and maybe it's not the case for everybody. Um, but I, I certainly just feel super comfortable and, and trusting and, and happy to, mm-hmm. to work with somebody like Paul. So do you have a team, team Lucas or team Nathan? I get asked that all the time. I've, I've, I started, I actually made a decision a while ago. Every time someone asked me that I would just flip flop. So I'd say one and the next time I would say the other one and the other one, the other one. Um, I quite honestly cannot choose. Um, I'm so glad that I have no say in, in, in that big question. Um, triangle, they're both such fabulous human beings and such brilliant actors. And I, enjoy them both so much as humans um and I don't I don't really think there's a wrong choice I think they're both perfect in their own unique way yeah I I think that I know I'm normally not a love triangle person at all but Mm -hmm. I think they actually have done a really good job with this Mm -hmm. love triangle and uh and it's it's not totally obvious who she's gonna pick I think I'd be surprised if she doesn't pick Nathan because that seems like the more Elizabeth pick but Mm -hmm. I kind of want her to pick Lucas because I think it would just make the show more interesting. Totally. I think he's more of a contrast. She would saying. grow more as a character. It would make yeah. it a better show. But I think the more obvious pick is probably Nathan. But I just feel like she's already been with the Mountie. She's already, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just like, pick somebody different. That would make more interesting television. <laughs> totally, totally. Is my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it is interesting to hear all the opinions. Because I think I think what I've, I've noticed from what I've seen online is there isn't really a wrong choice because pe- they're equally kind of liked and they're different. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a unique thing to have a love triangle last this long. So tensions are high. What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very, I mean, especially with that ending last season, that was pretty exciting. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you watch a show or? Do- I do. To be honest, I see quite a bit of it in ADR when we go in and we record our voice and um, when it's, when the projects are, when the episodes are in post-production, that's when I see the, the most of most of it some people hate watching themselves they can't I don't love watching myself full disclosure not not a huge fan you obviously can learn a lot from watching yourself but there's an element of 
you have to relinquish control as an actor a little bit because you have full control over your performance on the day. But once that's done, it's like you pass on your performance and and it gets chopped up and changed and yeah. edited and, and they drop scenes and they add things and they and they move things around. So your right. memory of how you film something isn't necessarily what appears on screen. So if you're a bit of a control freak, which I maybe am a little bit from time to time, that can be hard because you're like, that's not how I remember doing that. Oh, is that really what that looked like? Why did I agree to do this? Why, why did I do? So sometimes I get very caught up and very in my head about things. And sometimes I find it a lot easier to just kind of back off, breathe and just tell myself it's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, it can be a little challenging, but I, I think with, as the years go on, I am getting better um, at watching it. But obviously I watch if it's a big episode or something crazy is happening. I love Twitter. I love seeing mm -hmm. all the commentary. So I do, I'm more in tune with, with this show than I am with probably anything else I've ever worked on just for that reason. And you end up seeing all your scenes anyway, because people send you mashups and things end up on your Instagram. And, and so you, you end up seeing it all anyway, it's yeah. just sometimes fractured. <laughs> you get some good old, uh, hearty, uh, hearty montages. You do, and they're adorable. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! I some of them are so so sweet. <laughs> Comic Sans all the way, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, is that one of the mashup accounts? No, it's just one of the the font that they. Oh often oh oh use. yeah 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 of course <laughs> Comic Sans yeah yeah yeah. Um, but uh, but what do you think has made the show last eight seasons? What do you I mean? They have really been had a lot of challenges for a little mm -hmm. cable show. I mean, they've got. Mm. They've had obviously Jack leaving, uh, losing Jack as a character. They had Abigail leaving, mm -hmm. uh, and that's challenging. And just keeping any show going is a mm -hmm. challenge for eight seasons. So, totally. why do you think that they're able to keep its appeal and keep going? I think there are a number of factors. Um, the fact that we have such a brilliant fan base who are so devoted to this show is just such a dream. Uh, I also think Erin, um, 100%, you have to give credit to her. She's such a brilliant actor. She plays that role so beautifully. Um, and she always has such, she plays conflict and, and um, she plays everything so wonderfully. <laughs> She's such a great face uh, mm -hmm. for portraying Elizabeth. Um, I know that sounds very strange. She's such a great face for portraying it, but she does. She really does. If you watch her, she's a very nuanced actor. So I think she's carried the show in such a brilliant way. I don't know if it would have worked if it were anyone else, to be quite honest. I also think it's a show about a town. And I think a lot of people see themselves living in Hope Valley. You can picture this as a place. It, it's not necessarily a show about any single person. I mean, it is, of course, it centers around Elizabeth, but the town is very much a character. Mm -hmm. And I think people love to feel like they're a part of that. Yeah. So I think, yeah, there are a number of factors that contribute. Well, you get invested in characters mm -hmm. and maybe that's what makes it hard to lose. And it is also them, but... an ensemble cast. And sometimes this can work out so brilliantly mm -hmm. where people are like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm, I don't know what character, like I'm an Abigail or I'm a Faith or I'm a Carson or I, mm -hmm. oh, he reminds me of this person in my life. Like there are enough personalities to kind of keep yeah. people interested, I think. Well, and I've talked to a lot of people too that really actually feel like these last two seasons have been two of the stronger seasons of the show because uh, you have more kind of leaning on that ensemble mm -hmm. nature of the show than you did when it was just kind of the Jack and Elizabeth show and everybody else was kind of totally piped in every now and then. Yeah. And I, I think that, that it's just been a little bit more entertaining and enjoyable to watch uh, mm -hmm. when you have more characters that are getting plot lines and stories and everything. Yeah. That's a very good point. That absolutely could be mm -hmm. but I don't know I think you just we get lucky you never know they develop so many shows each year and you never know what's gonna stick you never know what's gonna land and what people are gonna love and it's just such a an honor to be a part of something that's lasted this many years so obviously mm -hmm. something's working because mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we're already at season eight it just seems so surreal yeah yeah and you were lucky to get on uh, or fortunate for your talent that you were able to get on two shows that have had a pretty good run totally yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I pinch myself every day I'm like how did this happen <laughs> uh yeah I got very lucky very lucky indeed mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, we have fun questions that we always ask at the end of the interview, but you've already done all our fun questions. So today Ooh. I came up with, I went through your filmography and oh I came boy. up with a question based on each or most of your filmography. That's amazing. So this is the Andrea Brooks IMDb questionnaire. Yay. <laughs> And I did send it to you last night. So hopefully uh, did. Give you I got a, through, give you... I got through most of them, but you know what? Like you, some of these might throw me. So forgive me if okay. I have a brilliant answer for all of these. It's okay. Uh, this is a testing ground for new, uh, new questionnaires. So first question, uh, what was your first on-screen kiss? Oh my gosh. I did read that one. And I was thinking about this and I, I don't, okay. I actually meant to go through my IMDb and actually think about this. Uh, I think the fact that I don't know this is kind of wild. There have been a number. <laughs> I've had a few. Um, I think my first one, I did an ABC pilot for Aaron Spelling when I was 17 years old. I did a, a, a small role in this pilot. And there was a scene at a party. It was a, it was a series that was set in the 80s, never got picked up. But when we shot the pilot, uh, I was dressed head to toe like Madonna at, at an 80s teen party and then I had to kiss a guy in the closet and then they opened the closet and it was like oh what are you doing um but I don't actually think I kissed him I think it was just alluded to I kind of can't remember uh which shows you how romantic on-screen kisses are because because the fact that I don't remember means I don't know it obviously I never stuck in my brain or maybe I didn't I don't know so that one uh, but I know he had lipstick on his face. So I, I anyway, uh, that's my kind of first memory of like, yeah. think it's kiss, but I don't think it actually happened because it definitely didn't play out on screen. Convoluted answer. I apologize. But I think my first kind of romantic on screen kiss, I think this was my first one was with an actor named uh, Keenan Tracy. He's Canadian. Uh, and it was in a, in a wacky sci-fi TV movie. And the world was ending. We were being attacked by aliens and we kissed by a river. I think that was my first like real true, yeah. like romantic kiss where they get multiple angles and you're outside and you're all in your head and then you, whatever. So I think that was it. I might be wrong though. I'm going to have to go through my IMDb and check. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, very good. All right. Well, next question. And these are, these are kind of the one calls the heart questions. Uh, so are you a small town girl or big city girl? Oh man. Um, mm, oh, that's hard. I feel like if you asked me this a year ago, pre pandemic, I would have been city girl all the way. 100%. I love being downtown, love restaurants, love meeting my friends, love going for a workout, grabbing a coffee, be downtown all the way. COVID's kind of changed my perspective a little bit. And obviously I've moved as a result. I am no longer a city girl at the moment. So I want to say both, but I do think that there's something vibrant and amazing about big cities that are just, it's just so exciting and, and, and fun when you're not living in a COVID world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Next question. Since you played doc a doctor or nurse, uh, have you ever broken a bone? I have not. Mm. I have not. I had a stress fracture once, but no, I've never, I've never broken a bone. I've come close. I thought I broke, I thought I broke a finger recently. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> so oh, that's no, good. No, no bone, no bone breaks for me. I tore my uh, my ACL in my knee, and, oh, and so that was that's awful. extremely painful. Yeah, <laughs> that happens to so many people too. It just sounds horrendous. And it was so. It wasn't even like a. I wasn't even like skiing or doing something fun. I would literally slipped on my bathroom floor. No. Yeah. Oh, but you could tell a different story. You could be like, I was playing I a elite soccer game, and and I was about to score the winning goal. But I don't know. I feel like everyone tears their ACL playing soccer. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I would believe you. I'd be like, yeah. sounds right. Uh, all right. Next question. Since you are play villain in uh, in Supergirl, do you have a favorite superhero and a favorite supervillain? I thought about them. Like the obvious answer would be like Supergirl, Lex Luthor, so cool. Um, which they are fantastic. But uh, I don't know. Like I'm I, I should have really thought about this a little bit more. Um, a are you team villain. in general team DC or team Marvel? Do you have to say DC? I have the DC show. I have to say DC. <laughs> <laughs> No, to be honest, I love, I, I, I think everything is super interesting. I don't want to, but DC, DC, yeah, okay. they're, they're pretty good. So would you say know. you're team Batman or team Superman? 
I think I have to say Superman. Yeah. But also, I like Lex Luthor really truly is a great villain. Mm-hmm. I think the way John Cryer plays Lex particularly is fascinating. So yeah, we'll go yeah. Lex Luthor. Classic. It's a classic. There we go. I, yeah. I think it's a good answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for In the Key of Love, my question, yeah. do you have a favorite musician? Oh, uh, I love Lana Del Rey. All of her music so beautiful and haunting and majestic and I remember I I discovered her when her first when Born to Die came out I had just moved to LA I was 22 years old and I just remember whipping around the city hitting my auditions and playing that album again and again and again and every time I listen to her music it's just this like hit of nostalgia and I just adore her music I think she's super creative so she's probably up there very good. Okay. Uh, for Jingle Around the Clock, I have, what is your favorite thing about Christmas? Oh, Christmas. I love seeing friends and family. I know this year it was a little different because of COVID and I really missed that. Um, but like having dinners and parties and New Year's parties and seeing everybody and buying gifts for people you care about. Just, just family and friends. Very good. Mm-hmm. Okay. For Jingle, I mean, for Harvest Wedding, uh, are you a fan of Pumpkin Spice Latte, in which you've already answered? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love a Pumpkin Spice Latte. Call me basic, but I love <laughs> DSL. Um, love it. Totally yeah. love it. Yeah. Not even ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for Destination Wedding, what is your dream vacation? Oh, well, we've talked about cities versus... Uh, small towns gosh there's so many I've been so many brilliant places uh it's hard hard to narrow it down but I was actually just talking to somebody the other day I love I love Paris <laughs> I know that's a cliche but it's a romantic city it's a yeah. huge city the lights the history the museums I think just running around a, an amazing city at midnight with someone really awesome and just discovering yeah. things and, and being outside and the vibrance of a city like Paris would probably yeah. be like an ideal. If I could run around Paris. And well, if you need a buddy city. when you're ready to go run around Paris, <laughs> let me know. Cause I've never All right. been. <laughs> All right. All right. I like okay. it. Uh, for Bates Motel, what is your favorite scary movie? Scary movies. Like it's the sound of scary movies. Just, just hurts me. <laughs> you know, the, like they've, they've become such um I don't know. These movies are so monstrous with their sound. They really, yeah. it's not even necessarily scary what they put on the screen anymore. It's just like the that, that happens that <laughs> yeah, oh, terrifies true. me. Um, the, I don't know if I have a favorite because I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily a huge scary movie fan, but I do, I think Ring was pretty horrifying. Yeah. That still sticks in my yeah. brain. And Ringu, the, uh, the original Japanese film from which it was derived from uh, Ringu and Ring pretty up yeah. there in terms of scary. Yeah. And that... signs, signs freaked me out when I was young. Uh, the thought of aliens and cornfields just. Yeah. For about a week oh. after you watch Ring, every time the phone rings, you're like, oh, I know suspect. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what should answer. Uh, very good. Okay. And I, I also think that not like a, like I'm going to murder people scary movie just like a little scary movie makes for a great date movie because you don't want to yeah. go to a romantic movie because that's like a lot of pressure totally um, and so totally. so go to a, like just just like something uh like there was a movie crawl uh mm-hmm. a couple of years ago that's mm-hmm. a crocodile movie so fun and perfect date movie because it's just like enough that you kind of want to snuggle and like oh, you know you're getting all tense but like not enough that you're like traumatized or anything like that I like that theory that yeah. maybe you don't want to watch a romantic yeah, movie as a date and- you know yeah. what I was saying? I actually, I just, I just got back from uh, Vancouver Island where I was shooting a project. And I was saying to my, my uh, co-star Spencer, Spencer Lord, which by the way, you should all look him up. He's fabulous and wonderful. And he's going to go a long way in this business. I adore him. Uh, we were shooting something pretty romantic, you know, how like rom-coms are. And I remember mm-hmm. just looking at him and I was like, do you ever feel like when you do these movies, you're just giving people unrealistic dating expectations? <laughs> and then he looked at me and he goes, no, why? And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're Mr. Perfect. Um, <laughs> like, obviously we love the films, but yeah, for a date, I, often, I kind of I wonder, mean, does it give yeah. unrealistic expectations or are there men out there who are like, I mean, I'm sure there are, but it's, yeah, I want to, should do. Let us know if you're out there. Cause uh, <laughs> yeah. we haven't met, 
I would like to know the answer to this. What do you think? Is this realistic or is it completely unrealistic? I've been out of the dating game for a while, so I don't know. I'm unaware. So, let us know in the comment section your thoughts. The so next question is about a wish for Christmas. And I'm saying, what would you wish for on the magic Santa Claus? She wishes uh, to have courage. That's right. She does make a wish. Right. Um, what would I personally, as Andrea, wish for? Um, Oh, I would, I would wish for just health across the world. I know that might sound silly or naive, mm -hmm. but I, I really would wish um, nothing but health for everybody, especially yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can, I mean, I think we all want COVID to just go away so oh bad. Gosh. Yeah. All right. For once upon a time, you got to ask what's your favorite Disney movie? Oh, uh, you know, I've just started revisiting Disney movies with my daughter because she's uh, almost 15 months now. So she's just at the age where she's starting to like, I'm letting her have a little bit of screen time, not much, mm -hmm. but she, we were rewatching. Uh, it's hard. I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite growing up. I liked so many of them, mm -hmm. but we were, she really likes Beauty and the Beast. Like yeah. some of the, some of the little music scenes from Beauty and the Beast. And I was like, oh, this is good. Small town girl reading her books. Everyone's making fun yeah. of her. Yeah. I'll say Beauty oh, and, and, and that beauty lies within. Yeah. It's a great message. So absolutely, I love that one. They're one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Okay. From summer in the city, are you a summer or winter person? Oh gosh. Uh, in the, in the summer, I'm always a winter person in the winter. I'm always a summer person. <laughs> always. Uh, just going back the, the movie that I actually just, just wrapped was very cold. I've been <laughs> cold for three weeks. So I'm going to say right now, I am a summer person just because I still feel a little bit chilled. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so date with love. You, would you say you have a like kind of a dream date that you think would be super fun if you could go on a date right now with your husband? What would you want oh, to do? I would take us like, again, like run around Paris. I would go to a city. Mm -hmm. I would eliminate COVID from the equation and right. I would go somewhere fabulous where we could go to theater and, and go to a, a good restaurant and be in public, anything yeah. um, that we can't do right now. I, yeah. I, 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 that would be my selection in a perfect I think, world. I think my dream date would be to go to Disneyland, especially now once uh, it's closed. Yeah. Well, Which makes Disneyland me so sad. The same? Oh, I mean, I got they've Star Wars <laughs> land or whatever it's called. I've never yeah, seen Galaxy's that. Edge. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, we'll be lucky if it opens this year at all, oh, which is so crazy. sad. I love Disneyland. <sighs> um, okay. Uh, almost done. Uh, so for the bridge, what is one of you, one of your favorite books? Um, you know what? A tried and true one. Cause I get asked this a lot and I love a lot of true crime thrillers, mystery. Um, I love biographies. That's probably my favorite, mm -hmm. but for like a tried and true staple that I've read so many times that just is a classic that will always be on my list and of Green Gables. Good choice. Yeah. Good choice. All right. Last question uh, for Unreal. What is your favorite reality show? I love reality TV. It's my guilty <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> it's, I'm ashamed <laughs> to admit that. But I think yeah. sometimes when you're an actor, um, watching shows all the time that are scripted can be not stressful but yeah. it feels a little bit like work because you're like why'd they cast that person why'd they oh the lighting's weird oh yeah, that's interesting. i can see like, that oh i know the director oh blah, blah, blah. So, so you're in your head and it, you kind of go into work mode sometimes not always uh -huh. um so i because reality television i've my only foray in reality tv was when we did the christmas cookie matchup with the one calls the heart cast uh -huh. last year that was my only experience in reality television and boy was it different mm -hmm. um but i'm also confused I don't really understand how it works. I don't know. It's still a mystery to me. It's, watching anything scripted is not a mystery. I know exactly how it's done and I will always be thinking about it. So it's not, so it, yeah. the reality, I'm just like, wow, did they really say that? Like <laughs> I buy into it 100%. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, <laughs> I love Jersey Shore. <laughs> um, yeah. That came out at like the right time in my life. Yeah. I think. And everyone my age was just super into it. It was really funny. And now they're doing Jersey Shore Family Vacation, which I am watching because I like seeing them grow up. Yeah. You know, I think Mike, the situation has come such a long way with his sobriety and Snooki left the show and I'm devastated. And it's cool seeing people who are wild kind of become parents and, yeah. and mature. I actually do enjoy that. So 
Yeah, Jersey, Jersey Shore. <laughs> there we go. Very good. All right, there you go. Very good. How would I do on my Andrea Brooks? Those are those are amazing questions. That was what a creative way of doing it. I love it. <laughs> okay, good. Well, thank you for giving such great answers. So, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. This was so much fun. I had a great time. And uh, do you have social media you'd like to share? Sure. I am Andrea K. Brooks on Instagram and Twitter. And I do have a Facebook page that is that my Instagram's linked to. I don't generally okay. go on it, but uh, Andrea Brooks actor is my uh, okay. Facebook. Well, and are you going to be live tweeting some of the episodes? Yeah, I'm really excited. I think with mm -hmm. COVID especially, it's so important to kind of stay in touch. And, and yeah, I think this will be a really important year for that. So I'm actually looking forward to the tweet fests again. Um, Great. Well, make sure everybody, make sure that you all follow Andrea and uh, and over on Twitter, because you're definitely going to want to be uh, involved in that. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think of all the different things that we talked about. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And also make sure you're following the podcast on Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store, which is really fun. And thanks again, Andrea. Really appreciate you coming on and we'll have to have you back on for interview number five. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's always fun to chat. <laughs> All right. Well, bye everyone. Bye.